Hello and welcome to our Maritime Impact podcast series. I'm your host, Eric Nyhus, Director Environment for Maritime at DNV. It's been a hectic couple of weeks for those of us involved in the environmental regulations of shipping. I'm just back from MPC 80, and in this episode, we'll run through the key headlines from the meeting, hot off the press. In recent episodes, we've spoken about what we might expect from the meeting, and today we'll see how many of those predictions were correct. The episode will be a bit shorter than usual as I take you through the major outcomes. Our next episode will drive a bit further into the details and provide you with a full analysis of MPC 80. We hope you enjoy the episode, and now on to the show. So on July 7th, the deal got done. Five years after the adoption of the initial IMO greenhouse gas strategy, and after two weeks of challenging negotiations, MEPC 80 agreed to a revised strategy. And it's quite a significant revision. First and foremost, the ultimate decarbonization goal for shipping has firmed up and been brought forward. Qualifying words notwithstanding, 2050 is now the marker for when shipping should reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions. A lot has been made of the strategy using the phrasing by or around, i.e. close to, 2050. But what needs to be understood is that this is political wording, structured to create consensus and a landing space from which the IMO member states can move forward together. In practical terms, we see it as a clear marching order and what we as an industry need to work towards. Secondly, and in my view of greater immediate impact, we now have intermediate checkpoints that we need to reach. The IMO agreed targets for both 2030 and 2040, and these are ambitious ones. For 2030, only seven years down the road, shipping has to reduce its emissions by 20%, striving towards 30% compared with 2008 levels. For 2040, the numbers are 70%, striving towards 80%. And all of these numbers, including the 2050 goal, are on a well-to-wake basis rather than the tank-to-wake figures we have become accustomed to looking at in the context of the original strategy. Additionally, for 2030, the reduction target is supplemented by a goal of an uptake of zero or near zero greenhouse gas emission technologies, fuels, and or energy sources, representing at least 5%, striving for 10% of the energy used by shipping. In broad terms, this 2030 target is one where energy efficiency, sustainable biofuels, possibly supplemented by increased uptake of wind power, would be expected to play the most significant role. It is important to recognize that while the revised strategy is a massive achievement by the IMO member states, it's still only a strategy. The proof of the pudding comes when the strategy gets translated into implemented and enforceable regulations that are strategy aligned. Fortunately, there was progress on this as well. On the positive side, there was agreement in principle, both on the regulations that are to be developed and on their timeline. The IMO agreed on the so-called technical measure, Greenhouse Gas Intensity Fuel Standard, that will regulate the phased reduction of well-to-wake greenhouse gas intensity of the fuel used by shipping. There are concrete proposals on the table provided separately by the EU and China that are very likely to form the basis for the final shape of the regulation. On the economic side, there was agreement on the need for an economic element on the basis of a maritime greenhouse gas emissions pricing mechanism. However, that is as far as the agreement goes. At the last MEPC meeting, there was massive resistance to a cap-and-trade system. This meeting saw very robust resistance to a levy mechanism. Most likely, this leaves a door open for some kind of pricing mechanism linked to the greenhouse gas intensity standard, but it's premature to speculate on what the final outcome will be. Negotiations on the design of the economic element are expected to be pretty challenging. The IMO did agree a timeline for the new regulations, adoption in 2025 with entry into force in 2027, and back calculating, this tells us that the IMO really needs to hammer out an agreed base document for developing these regulations at MEPC 81 latest. That's April 2024. Time is tight, to put it mildly. There are a number of other greenhouse gas-related issues and decisions to discuss, along with some non-greenhouse gas-related stuff, but I will get back to all of that in the next episode. So for those of you who are waiting for info on the data collection system or on the biofuel decisions, I can only apologize, but we'll get there in the very near future. 
So what kind of implications do we see from the strategy decisions at MEPC 80? Most importantly, in my view, shipping has now received very clear marching orders. The course is set, the speed is set, a very clear signal has been sent as to what is expected from us as a sector. We also now know that additional regulations are in the pipeline and we know when we can expect to see them. And while we don't yet know all the technical details, we know what they are expected to achieve. So when you think about the potential technological solution space here, and recognize that energy efficiency and green fuels are a key part of this, it's fairly obvious that the IMO has sent a clear demand signal to technology providers, and in particular to the fuel producers and their investors. Our hope and expectations are that in combination with demand signals from aviation and with those coming from the EU ETS and the fuel EU Maritime, we'll see a quick ramp up in fuel production capacity. The equally obvious risk is that they don't listen and await regulations actually kicking in before starting to take action. That potential delay could make the 2030 goals really hard to reach. I would also like to highlight that the decisions made and those that are still in the pipeline all serve to strengthen the message that operators need to improve their knowledge and understanding of their own emission data. Whether it is soon to be incoming EU regulations or the regulatory consequences of the IMO greenhouse gas strategy, knowing and understanding your own emissions data will not only matter for legal compliance, it will also be business critical. DNV offers different tools and services to support smooth and reliable emission data collection and submission. So with that, I will wrap up this MAPC 80 strategy highlights episode. The key message I hope I have gotten across is that the IMO, with the new greenhouse gas strategy, has made a momentous decision and one that will have significant implications for the maritime industry. We have the goals, we know additional regulations are incoming, and we have the timelines. There will always be caveats and uncertainties, but the mandate for shipping greenhouse gas reductions is now clear. Thank you for joining us for this episode. You've been listening to the Maritime Impact Podcast from DNV with me, Eric Nayus. As I mentioned at the top, we will be back very soon with a more in-depth analysis of all the important decisions taken at MPC 80 and what they mean for shipping. If you enjoyed the episode, please don't forget to give us a rating or review. Thank you for listening.